start working overtime. <laughs> She's also a TV correspondent for CW6 News San Diego, as well as One American News Network. Her website is The KD Report, and hopefully she is uh, streaming live on Facebook. I Kimberly, am. are you there? I am streaming. All right. I got to tell you about that email. See, I don't see emails normally when I'm doing the show. But then I lost you again, and I said, uh-oh, so uh, I'm going to give you a special number to call next time. Okay? You know what? Call My up. iPhone went swimming, and it was supposed to be able to swim for at least a couple hours, and it only swam for less than five seconds, and so it's like ran everything, my computers, everything. It's completely Apple. It's wonderful oh how it all it intertwines, and you can't take them apart. Well, I knew those iPhones were smart, but this is the first time I heard they know how to swim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Now you know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Because, uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you, uh, <laughs> what is going on over there? Uh, gun confiscation, you know, it's, they've taken all the guns away from the, from the, the good people and all the bad people have the guns. And we were going to talk about that earlier. Now we got 90 flag officers calling for resignation. Yeah. Uh, wow. Which one do you want to touch on first? Yeah, um, we can kind of, if we want to touch on the 90 flag officers and admirals, um, admirals and generals who are calling for not only the resignation of the uh, Defense Department Secretary Lloyd Austin, but also, you know, Secretary Blinken over at, you know, State Department. Um, we know that they're, they're probably not going to lose their job. You know, Mark Milley, the General Mark Milley, should be another one that should hand yeah. in his resignation. But as with this administration and with most administrations, it's, they all run by the you screw up, you move up. And that's how we've gotten to this mess, and that's how getting out of Afghanistan fell apart so quickly. We've had, you know, the, the civilian side of things being run very, very poorly. Um, and, you know, they simply were not listening to the people that are on the ground. Now, I'm saying that brass that sits in D.C., they had a full picture of what was going on, and they should have done their job in letting the president know what the situation uh, was on the ground over there in the Middle East. But no matter what the situation was, you know, he'd already promised no man will be left behind. No yeah. one will be left behind. Yeah. Uh, we know for a fact that didn't apply to dogs, huh? Yeah. Well, I mean, when you when you, you look at the all those down. yeah, well, I'm just saying that yeah, they're yeah. I mean, forget the animals. I mean, I just think that it's silly for for organizations to think they need to get these dogs out. I think people's lives mat matter a lot more than dogs. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but I'm just saying that you know when you look at the situation and how poorly it was managed in the last two weeks, that we're going to see, see more terrorism most likely in this country, especially with a wide open southern border. They've been already been coming across the border. We've been blocked yeah. from getting information. It's sort of like you're, uh, you're just asking for it yeah. as we go into this break. Uh, Kimberly Dvorak will continue, and uh, we'll touch on uh, all of the wonderful equipment that we left behind, too. I mean, wow. Fiasco, fiasco. Uh, Kimberly Dvorak. And it's thekdreport.com. A little bit later on, you can go there and you can check out and watch and listen to Chuck Wilder's CRN with my guest Kimberly Dvorak, Senior Foreign Policy Advisor for the Committee for Responsible Foreign Policy. And boy, I'll tell you, Kimberly, I know any time they start picking on the Marines, uh, you kind of, you know, yes, because uh, I know how you are. You're a, <laughs> you are a protector of those men in uniform, yes. Well, yeah, we, and, lost, uh, uh, we lost 13 you know, of our Marines uh, in Afghanistan. And, and they were lives that, that did not need to happen. It did not need to happen. Um, this was the reckless policy of the Biden administration that decided that they were going to abandon the entire country that we'd been in for 20 years uh, in less than two weeks. They were shocked when they, they didn't realize that in 11 days the Taliban would be able to regain uh, control of Kabul. They were stunned. They were held flat-footed. But as you and I know, back in 2012 and 2014, we wrote and discussed on this program a number of reports, national intelligence reports, predicting this is exactly what was going to happen. And you you have to say that this administration is selling out the the actual warriors that are down, you know, fighting, you know, on the ground in Afghanistan up until you know two. 
two, three weeks ago, they knew it was going on on the ground. They knew. But when the Biden administration decided they were going to stop the air, you know, the airstrikes and they were going to start, stop working with the, the Afghan security uh, force, that, they, that this was going to fall apart quickly. Because, again, as we discussed last week, you know, Afghanistan, the Taliban's pretty brutal, you know, so you either are going to join them, you're going to hide, get out of the way, or they're going to kill you. And they've already started the executions. We've already heard the horror stories starting to come out. You're going to see this uptick substantially over the next couple of weeks as the Taliban goes around and disarms the civilian population, and that includes police officers, and that includes, you know, people that work for the Afghan uh, security forces. So yeah. the only people with the guns are going to be the Taliban. And this has become a huge, huge PR boom for the Taliban. Of course, as you mentioned, you know, we, you know, just this, a list of what we, uh, what, what, what we leave behind, $83 billion, uh, 2,500 bombs, 1,400 grenade launchers, 22,000 Humvees, 42,000 trucks, 16,000 night goggles, 64,000 machine guns, um, you've got Black Hawk helicopters and other fixed green um, aircraft, uh, C-17s. Uh, I mean, they're the, the most armed military now in the Middle East, and there's no doubt about it. We, we funded, we paid for it, and what the Taliban, all they had to do was wait for their opening. They retook control of the country in 11 days. We were there for 20 years. It took them 11 days to take over. They shooed us out of the, the Kabul airport with our tail between our legs, so to speak, and a, a terrorist attack that took out 13 of our Marines. So now you've got the you know terrorist groups all over the world being looking to what the Taliban did because in essence what they did is they they showed that the United States government, at least under this administration, was nothing more than a paper tiger, and that we are not going to retaliate. And you know, in regards to like, a lot of people are talking about the, you know, the administration's trying to tout that they went out and they they ran a couple of drone strikes to go get the guys that blew up our Marines. Well, we've received no information on those people, who they were. And if they were someone that's higher up in the administration, they, we would have had their name. We would have known who they were, where they you know, stood within the organization that they were representing. And we've got none of that, meaning that we're led to believe the, the reports on the ground, which were they were, in most cases, innocent bystanders who had nothing to do with the, the terrorist attack against the Marines that, that claimed 13 yeah. heroes. And by the way, one of the 13 uh, was a sailor medical because uh, they work with the Marines. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, and, it's, it, it's, and I think it was two, two females also. And yeah. I, boy, I'm telling you. And, and they're all young. You get, they were you know, babies. They to, I mean, they were young. Yeah. I mean, 20-year-old. I mean, there was one guy, I think, Tucker. Tucker had his family, the mother on. Either Tucker or, uh, or uh, what's her name that follows him. Uh, sorry about that. Laura. But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and this guy, he was in charge of a battalion or, or yeah. And, uh, I just think that, wow, you know, yeah, it, it, when it comes to the Marines especially, you know, they're the, you know, it, it's really astonishing to hear the State Department um, Secretary Blinken come out and say that, yeah, we love our Marines. They're the first people we see when we reach our diplomatic posts and all that. Well, maybe next time you don't want to sell out your, your people, um, you know, that you say you love and appreciate. Um, you know, selling them down the river on this two-week exit strategy that was just catastrophe for this country. And we won't see the results for this for years. Th this is just the gift that I'll keep on giving. Because, again, you tie this with our southern border that's wide open, and it's going to make it a lot easier for terrorist attacks. And I know that when Obama was in office, um, I you know went after him a lot on these kill lists. We talked about the kill list on this show, but uh, you know what you're going to start seeing? You're going to start seeing kill lists in reverse now, because the Taliban has got all this military arsenal, and they're anxious to start using it. They may not be able to directly strike from Afghanistan to the United States, but they can certainly get our 
you know, military and diplomatic outposts around the world. And you better believe that's what we're going to start seeing. And they're going to be getting us with our own, you know, weaponry that we left behind. We did not blow these planes up. We did not blow the, the helicopters up. They were dismantled electronically. Well, that doesn't, that means, the only thing that means is that it takes them a little extra time to figure out how to turn it back on. They did not blow this equipment up, which is what we've done previously in previous wars. We've blown gear up. It, just like when we went after Bin Laden and we had that stealth helicopter that went down, they, they blew that up. They weren't successful at getting it entirely blown up, but that was not a, a helicopter that was going to be used for flying ever again. And this administration did not do that. And instead, we walked out on our allies, we walked out on our NATO partners in this part of the world, and we walked out on Americans and, and service members that served in that country, you know, on multiple tours. And, you know, those people wanted out. I was a, one of those people that wanted out. There's a way to get out that's the right way and the wrong way. And we, it, what the Biden administration did was the absolute worst way we could get out. And um, we're not, we've lost allies over this type of situation. And it's just something that's oh, yeah. very sad to see. You dare, you dare not tell us that we can't have uh, uh, war games up there around the uh, China Sea. Uh -huh, guess what? Okay, yeah, but uh, you know, but I'm not going to leave anybody behind. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. And Thailand, they've already warned Thailand, uh, China, saying, "Hey, this is your America that's going to come in here and save you." Yeah. And another thing is, is that I understand now from a couple of reports that the Taliban is now one of the best armed armies on planet Earth, you know, with 64,000 machine guns and 358 assault rifles, yep. that's a good start. Humvees and yeah. SUVs and uh, planes and helicopters and, yes. Yeah, uh, we gave that to them because we didn't, much. yeah, we didn't do anything. And if the, Bi there, you know, the August 31st was always an artificial deadline, but the second the Biden administration goes out there and uses that, you see what the Taliban did. They came back and did what Obama said, oh, that's the red line. We're drawing the red line in the sand here. Well, they've, they've learned from the United States, you know, how to kind of box people in here. Um, you know, we never had to give up, you know, Bagram Air Force Base. We did not want to give that up. The administration wanted it out, and they didn't, I don't know if they were just, they didn't feel that, you know, the, the Taliban was going to be able to take the country. If they weren't, that's completely, you know, asinine. Again, then, you know, we're going to start doing these after reports. You know, and again, I think, you know, General Mark Milley, needs to be relieved of duty. General Austin needs to be relieved of duty in this. The only person that's been relieved of duty is actually, you know, a, a, a colonel that's on the ground. And he actually came out and put his hands up and said that what we're doing is absolutely atrocious. And I'm not going to follow these orders because it's wrong. And he, and, he, and he put, you know, his resignation and money where his mouth is. But the United States brass in this country, the military brass, they have no backbone, and they have no guts whatsoever. They had no problem going after uh, President Trump on this. And I'm telling you that this is not the plan that the Trump administration negotiated in getting out of Afghanistan. Because we're nearly there with having like a 2,000 you know, footprint at Bagram so you can help the Afghan security forces with air cover. Um, because without you know, owning the air and owning the night, it makes fighting, you know, a lot tougher on our forces. And now what the United States has shown, the Biden administration has shown, is that we will not be fighting. So you're right. So now the ramifications down the road are Taiwan. And, you know, who of our NATO allies are really happy that we left Bagram in the middle of the night, didn't bother to let any of them know? I mean, who was running this operation? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Was this Barack Obama behind the scenes running it? Certainly sounds like him. He likes to get down and dirty, yeah. and he had fun on those Terror Tuesdays, pick, picking who was going to you know, be killed that next week. That's, that's the kind of president he was. He enjoyed that. He was comfortable in that mode, we were told, his chief of staff said. He's very comfortable yeah. in that mode. I mean, that's, you know, to me, that's just something well. that, it rings true. Did he think he was better at, at, at military exits than the planners of this? Because I don't know who was actually running this, but, you know, f fifth graders in California 
could have probably got out of Afghanistan a lot a lot easier than uh, the, the what was demonstrated by the the military brass and the Biden administration and in total. Tell you, Kimberly, uh, when it goes to Obama, you know how he managed to bring all these uh, Muslims in on visas, you know, and just uh, look at Minneapolis and so many other areas mm -hmm. that he did it. You know, Trump had tried to cut back on it, and then once, uh, you know, that didn't work uh, or whatever. But anyway, you, you think about all of the people that have come in and the vetting that wasn't going on, mm -hmm. just loading them up in those planes, you know. Yeah. And, of course, none of them had to wear a mask like we do if you get in an airplane. Yeah. And then I'm saying, you know, how many terrorists do you think crossed the southern border? And how many yeah. do you think got a <clears throat> pardon me, free ride? over here from Afghanistan. It only took about 11, I guess, on 9-11, I mean, for all the planning and driving the cars to get them yeah. to the airport and all this other stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, do you, I mean, do you know what this, like, sounds forward. like? Remember the weapons trafficking um, after yeah. Libya fell, after Benghazi? Libya fell, yeah. and all of those man pads went missing, and we had, you know, it, the whole country was a colossal just wreck, and we found out that those weapons were going over and they were landing and ending up on the battlefields in Syria. An illegal war, another illegal war we weren't supposed to be fighting in Syria. But those guns ended up there. Well, we learned that the U.S. government actually, you know, bought them and was FedExing them, in essence, to Syria to fight. We're seeing the same thing here. We're seeing that in this country, yeah, how many – that, you know, Afghan, whoever, it could be Taliban, it could be Al-Qaeda, they're one and the same, ISIS. They're like, oh my gosh, we're getting a free ticket to America on top of that. So we're going to get yeah. to come out and try to do jihad, plus we're getting a free trip out of it, and they're going to give us money to stay. I mean, how and ludicrous. Housing. <laughs> yeah. housing also, yeah. Kimberly. Free it's housing, like, free, uh, free medical Port, treatment. Port I mean, Bliss. yeah, it's just, yeah. it's endless. Fort Bliss, uh, Texas. Yeah. Yeah, Fort Bliss, yeah. Texas, they've already been instructed, start building houses for these people. Yeah. They're doing it already. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't, I'm trying to figure out how much the rent's going to be, but, you know, uh, you sure yeah. hate to say zero to the American people, don't you? Yeah. Well, I mean, and probably, you know, by far and large, the majority of the people getting out of there were fle fleeing a situation that was going to be horrible for them. And I understand that. But as you just said, it only takes 11. You know, it, it, that's not that's yeah. not a big number. And they were getting as many people in and out of there. And last week we talked about a couple of people who, you know, parlayed for their, you know, interpreters to get into the United States only to find out when they got here that, you know, one of them was a terrorist, an actual terrorist. Yeah. So, I mean, so you do have those stories. It's not unbelievable. But to think that the United States is going to take in all of these – I, it's my hope that we, you know, stop bringing them to the United States and put them on these lily pads, they call them, like in Qatar. And maybe Saudi Arabia wants to come and pick up the slack on some of this stuff and take in some of these refugees. Because now, you know, that's the, that's the new term. They're all refugees, and that's what they're trying to call the people crossing uh, the southern border illegally. That's what they're trying to refer to them as. Because right now you're seeing, you know, the, the goodwill of countries around the the globe that are taking in a lot of these refugees from Afghanistan. Um, it, it's it's yeah. something that, you know, it, is a, it just is a softer, kinder, gentler term. And the thing with those kind of terms at the end of the day, that's when disaster strikes. That's when, you know, you know we get somebody who decides they want to go home early and they aren't going to finish the report on someone. And then it ends up, you know, turning into a terrorist attack situation. And, again, the terrorist attack does not have to be in Afghanistan. I mean, it can be in, you know, in Germany. It can be in Africa. Just any diplomatic outpost is where this needs to happen. So in any event, it's, uh, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's stunning to see that this administration just completely dropped the ball and you could not have handled this more poorly than it. I mean, there's just, you couldn't have done it worse. I mean, there was just no worse no, way to do it. Uh, and, you know. And you're not, you're not hearing too much about uh, the California school kids and uh, their chaperones or whatever. Mm -hmm. Quite a few of them went over for this uh, summer yeah. visit, I guess, or trip or yeah. whatever. 
and they are also left behind. Yeah. We're going to take a break, and we're going to continue in just a moment. Uh, Kimberly DeBorak, Foreign Policy Advisor for the Committee for Responsible Foreign Policy, and uh, the website, thekdreport.com. And with all of this going on, Kimberly, they still say, well, we got to get that $3.5 trillion spending plan, got to take care of those potholes. Yes, and, and we got to get rid of global warming. Look what it did to, you know, New Orleans. Yes, look what it did to... Uh, Afghanistan. Can you believe yeah. they blamed uh, part of that on global warming? Oh, yeah. Afghanistan. Well, it's, it's everything. It's, it's, if we wake yeah. up in the morning, it's global warming. Um, anyway, I, I kind of just want to finish it with this one point. Um, and we yeah. have not seen the Secretary of Defense, Austin. He's not come out and made any statements before TV cameras addressing the nation. Um, about what happened in Afghanistan the last couple of weeks. That is really stunning that the defense secretary is not out there and not front and center on this. We have not seen him uh, anywhere. I mean, maybe he's you know thinking he needs to get back to his uh, board over at Raytheon, um, who made a whole bunch of money on selling these weapons to uh, the Afghanistan um, national you know, security forces. Where's he been? He's not been anywhere on this. And we have not seen civilian leaders hand in their resignations. We have not seen anybody, you know, come forward and say, oh, my gosh, I'm embarrassed. Because if you talk to the rank and file, you talk to the families of those fallen, they're devastated by this. And this is such a dishonorable way to get out of the, you know, Middle East and in Afghanistan in particular, because it was actually a jumping point for 9-11. That's where it did start. That's where Al Qaeda did do its, its training. It, I mean, the planning took place in Germany, but yeah, they they did have refuse there. But I'm going to just say that it is astonishing that we have not heard from uh, Secretary uh, Lloyd Austin, and it's it, it's shameful that he has not come out because, as the you know the Secretary of Defense, he had a lot of planning and he had a lot of knowledge into how this was going to you know go down. And then we have not heard from him on this. And uh, maybe it's indicative no. that he's going to hand in his resignation. I, or maybe that's indicative that he's going to, uh, you know, be fired. Maybe that's, you know, something to consider. But or, we heard, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, Kimberly, maybe he did exactly what they wanted him to do. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. It's like if you're a military you know? and you're a general, yeah. you know strategy and planning and logistics and you know what the enemy has and the military has you know a to z plans on the shelf for just about any situation if you were someone that was you know you know like general mckenzie and he didn't like what was being done he could have handed in his resignation but he didn't you know mark milley general um mark milley he he certainly had you know knowledge of what was going on behind the scenes but you know what? He didn't hand in his resignation either. So that means they must have said that it's okay, and they went along to go along, yeah. or they they thought that their plan was going to work, and it didn't. In any event, both of those generals need to be relieved of their duty because there's definitely a dereliction of you know honor here with with the their, the goodwill within the the military forces is gone now. Brass doesn't hold a lot of. A lot of say over what, what well, these men and women have to fight for and what they're going to continue to fight for under the Biden administration. It's very sad that their leadership failed them. I hate to, yeah, I hate to say it, but maybe most of their plan did work. Yeah. You know, changing the face of America, like what they're doing on the southern border. Yeah. Uh, they're doing it now, you know, and yeah. most of these people will end up in red states somehow. Yeah. Well, Kimberly, we have run all out of time. I certainly appreciate it. And I want to remind the listeners again, you can uh, watch this in its entirety on uh, thekdreport.com.